Hey everyone! Welcome! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello everybody. Good evening. Afternoon, actually. Wow. Yes, it's afternoon this time. Hello, Rose! Welcome. So, before we get going, a couple things. Hmm. It's the holidays. Yes. I'm being audited by the IRS. Yes. It's COVID. Yes. So, heads up. There is captain in, in my Coke. Yes, there is. Could I, didn't get, I didn't get my drink yet. Could be a fun live. Could not be a fun live. We don't know. We also have Chex Mix. Hi, we can't see you. Sorry. All right. So, I haven't seen a Facebook comment yet. Are we on Facebook? We got one from Cat. Cat was the first one. So, Kat, uh, Facebook's a little slower. Gotcha. All right. So, First, let me take a drink. Well, hi, Joanne. Yes, it has been a while. Okay. So I've been wanting to make this project now, it seems forever. It's not really forever, but we were going to do it Friday. And I forget why we didn't do it Friday. We just didn't do it. We just didn't do it Friday. And then the weekend came and I forgot we were watching Remy and Sean was installing the floor at Ali's. Mm -hmm. And then I was so excited because yesterday comes, we're going to do a live, mm -hmm. we get everything going, and my brother shows up, which wasn't a big deal, but then our internet crashes. So we didn't go live then. Which brings us to today. So, and then we were going to go live at Walmart and they don't allow recording in their stores. I no. mean, do we look like we're delinquent people? It could have been the half a gallon of Jack Daniels I was buying. Maybe. Allie made me checks. Thanks, Allie. Uh, she does it a special way where she coats it and does, she does this thing. She does it her way. I don't like pretzels, so she didn't put pretzels in it. Nope. So, all right. So, we'll put that over there. So, a couple things. Number one, this is going to be a two-parter. Two-parter. Part one here with Ken and Sean and Cece and Riley, but not Hades. We can't have Hades here because Cece's in heat. Mm -hmm. We can't have Hades, who is Cece's brother, and Cece, we can't do it. That cannot happen. So poor Hades doesn't get to be here. Very sad. Okay. What was I talking about? Two parts. Part one here. Oh, yeah. So the second part will be on our Talk to our channel mm -hmm. when we get there. Um, the reason we're starting a little bit earlier than normal is we're showing a ton in this video. And I want to tell you guys, tomorrow we are kicking off a Dixie Bell competition. So you're going to want to check back for that so you could win a $100 gift card to Dixie Bell. Nice. Very cool. All right. So also the inspiration for tonight's project comes from who I call Wifey, who is someone that is that chalk tour that I goes way back to the beginning. She inspired me. I was like, can you be my creative wife she said yes so ever since it's been wifey it's been wifey yeah and so it comes from that but we are going to be playing with would you bend now some of you may or may not know what would you bend is i rewatched my last video would you bend and i don't think anyone focused on the conversation or focused on the product you guys were all making fun of the name of the company would you bend you guys were just having a heyday in the conversation <laughs> about how naughty it was <laughs> Not naughty at all. The entire conversation was about bending my wood, Sean. I know. So, I want to show you guys this amazing product. So, if you have not seen this product, we're going to show you. It is a big part of our surface. So, what we're doing is we are creating a... One of my favorite holiday movies is The Polar Express. I love anything that revolves around the magic of Christmas. And The Polar Express is the epitome of that because this little boy is looking for the magic Christmas. He doesn't hear that damn bell. And by the end, he hears the bell. He does. Magic of Christmas. The magic you have of Christmas. to believe. So we're making a belief board, but we need to prep the board because I found the board I like, but it's got an ugly frame. So with Would You Ben, we're going to change it up. Okay. Um, so while I get my board ready, Sean's going to show you some. Now, my favorite thing on this, on the Would, would You Bend is the trim. It's my go-to because I can make pretty things out of the trim. But they have a, a ton of different categories. Another thing I want to tell you is um, we have a coupon for Would You Bend. Oh. It is right. Ken Hess. 10, I think. I don't remember. Just a sec. My captain's is 
making an appearance, Sean, so just a sec. <laughs> okay, so it is Ken has 10. So here's the deal. They are very generous to me, and they were giving me a very good commission, and I said, but can I have a coupon code? And they're like, the amount of commission we're giving you, no. So I said, cut my commission down so mm -hmm. we can have a coupon. Because here's the deal. You're going to go to the website. I know what you people are going to think of. And you're going to say, wow, that's a little expensive. And it is because you get a lot and what it does. So that's why I want the coupon code. So if you go use our link, use Ken Hess 10, that'll get you 10% off. This company ships it with care. Everything is shipped immaculate so it doesn't break. Mm -hmm. So while I get my board ready, I'm going to have Sean show some stuff that like, uh, go ahead and go to this camera so I can show them. So the company that ships this, look at this. Like, they ship it so good to where Rubber it's band. not going to break. They have a nice little piece of uh, MDF right in the middle. And they been... have a ton of stuff. They have trims. They have um, the things they call drops. They have... Uh, Sean will show you all the stuff. Yeah. You do it, Shawnee. You take over, Sean. You zoom in a little bit for some of these small pieces here. So this would be trim. This would be some very delicate, small, tiny trim. Comes in rolls, you know, they give you X amount of feet and of course you heat it and then this would unroll and it's bendable. Here's a little thicker, kind of a rope style. Here's another rope style, but thicker. Then we get into some, a uh, little more fancier type material. Sean so fancy, he don't even know. Maybe if I go down here. Stay down on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Here's some like looks like grape uh, grapevine. Uh, um, Monique says, "How long are they?" It, it'll tell you when, if you ever go to their site. It'll tell you exactly how long they are. Because they come in different lengths. They do come in different lengths. There's another kind of a flowery vine, grapevine, or maybe grape leaves, grapevine, I don't know. All right. Some kind of a twist. And twist. And twist. Another kind there. I'll bring up two, two, two at a Joanne time. Joanne says she wished to live in the U.S. This actually just hit the U.S. because it's already in Europe. How do you attach it to the surface? Yeah. We're going to show We're you. We're going to show you. Look, okay. This is a big one. Okay. I'm going to just kind of squeeze in. You can still show them stuff. Okay. And so then I'm on my last this one. is the one we're using today. Can you zoom out? I can. Thank you. Um, and then they also have, besides trim, they have a lot of other cool stuff that Sean will show. Yeah. Um, okay, so the board we are going to be working on today is an Arteza board. And it's kind of... I mean, it's not bad. It's an okay board, but we're going to spruce it up. And I have a vision. My vision's getting better with my friend, Captain. So. Could I attach them to the walls, etc., with command strips? Mm. It's not going to lay very flat with a command strip. So, okay. So, first question people are going to ask is... How does something like this work? Because obviously it's um, a piece of wood. So you can see here, it's hard piece of wood, but you can use a hairdryer on the hot setting. You can use a heat gun, or you can actually put it in the, a toaster oven or an oven. And literally, and too. yeah, literally once you apply heat, um, I'll show you, watch. You wanna zoom in? So you can see by adding the heat, you can start bending the piece of wood. So it's important to note that if you are 
trying to rush, you, you could break, break it. Because as soon as you don't have heat, you can see it starts to become stiff again. Now, if you do break it, no big deal. I can show you how you fix that. But that's the general idea. Now, they have more than just trim. They have mm -hmm. pretty much everything you can think of. They have animals. They have angels. They have steampunk. They have drops. They have floral. They have corner pieces. So, Sean will kind of show you throughout um, some pieces as I'm taping this. Um, the bigger pieces, which we're using... This one here is the one I'm using today. Can you go to the other camera, Shani? Yes. I'm using this one. Now, something like this, just keep in mind that the thicker and bigger the piece, the more heat it's going to take to unravel. So last night, I've already cut my two pieces that I need for tonight's project. Here they are that I've heated up. And what's cool is you can heat this as many times you want. So I can reheat this even after I paint it. You can heat it, you can stretch it, you can bend it, it's malleable. But then once it dries again, it's it's stiff. So um, the reason I cut these early is I didn't want to spend, you know, even five minutes, you know, with that. But a lot of people have said that they put it on a low... Mm -hmm. in their oven or a toaster oven a or griddle, a, a even like a griddle yeah. um a skillet anything if, like that if you use heat gun that's this powerful you definitely that want water everywhere and uh, you definitely want to make sure to not burn it because it will burn okay so torch. so fun fact it will burn if you're painting it no big deal but you can probably see on some of these i burned it and this one here i'm going to tell you right now this works, it, it is faster. This is a hot mother thingy, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's hot, it burns me. And I, oh, it's hot. So that's why I use the hair dryer, but this will be faster for yes. people. Yes, mm -hmm. it can be. But it will burn. Just be careful with it. Be careful. So, Sean will show you some other pieces. I'm gonna tape off our board because we are gonna paint it first. And he can show you some of the pieces. Now, make sure you use our links. Support this amazing company. Um, make sure to use, if you buy stuff, Ken has 10, so you get 10% off. And I'm going to tape off my board because we're going to paint it. And he can show you some of the other pieces. Kat says she puts it in her oven at 200 degrees. There you go. Thanks, Kat. All right, so you, you're you free to go. I'm going to go ahead and tape this off while you kind of talk to people. Okay. And then here's some uh, flourishes. Some nice thin ones, little curly Q types. And for indecency, I'm going to cover it. <laughs> Male body. There's nothing to be ashamed of, Sean. I know. Here's some grape vines. Everyone they has call, kibbles they, and bits. These are called, I think these are the ones that are called drops. So it looks like they're hanging. When well, then the guy that you just showed had drops in his nether region. Um, here's a picture frame, western style. What's so, cool on their website is they have trims, corners, all that stuff for big projects or little projects. The mermaid. And remember, you could literally heat this up because it's flat, heat it up, and you can actually put it on something curved with no problem. Mm -hmm. if, you want, if you want her tail to kind of come down a little bit, heat it up and you can bring it mm -hmm. down just a little bit. Tamara says, I'm so klutzy, I catch my project on fire. So I've, I've heated this pretty bad. It hasn't caught on fire, it just burns. So it, it, especially with the heat tool, it just burns, it turns black. No smoke, no nothing, but. A lion's head. Pretty thick piece, but if you have it, if it's slightly bent, you just heat it up, bend it. A little happy birthday tag. This would be kind of like in the steampunked part gears, and they come, and they, are, and they come smaller than those too. I think there's some in here. Yep. Maybe. Skull and crossbones. A 
This is a dragon. This looks like they're like the um, comics bang pow type of things. Hello, Diamond Crystal. Glad you made it. Hi, Chrissy. What else we got here? You have a thing behind you, too. Yes, I'm going to go to that. Oh. Thing. So here's the other gears. I knew there were some in there. Yeah. Here's a bunch of other types of gears, smaller. So if you are trying to, you can do like a whole bunch of these together, make it look like it's part of a machine, steampunk type I'll be thing. back. Steampunk type of things. If you have not checked out Would You Bend Instagram, you need to because they do amazing work and some of the mannequin body forms they've done, oh my gosh. So they're amazing. Cat says I have the angel wing. Angel wings are my favorite. I also have gnomes. Here's a rose. have gnomes. Here's a rose. Wait, what? They have gnomes. They have gnomes. Well then. So we've got all kinds of different sizes of sizes of flowers of roses, different kinds of flowers. Hello, Brenda. Okay. So I'll still show you some more pieces. So what I love about this is I love taking a board that you may not love at first, and you can use this to make it exquisite that's what we're going to do um and i will tell you here's the deal the would you bend website can be a little bit overwhelming and what i mean by that is because they were already established in europe and selling it they have a huge product line and for us just starting out it can be overwhelming because there is so many trends there is a lot of steampunk there is so much stuff I started with the trims because I can recreate, I can take a board and make it look beautiful. Um, you can do amazing stuff with it. You can stretch it, you can paint it, distress it, all sorts of stuff. So um, that's what I love about it. So we're going to start with Dixie Belle. And what I'm trying to do is um, when I first started with Chalk Tour, they had these what are called Verity boards and they're beautiful. But they, number one, were a little on this higher end. And number two, they um, were hard to ship. They actually came broken sometimes. So we're going to kind of turn this board and mimic something um, to kind of have a Christmas feel. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with Dixie Belle paint. And I'm actually using fluff. The reason I'm using fluff versus bright white is I like, we're going for kind of an ivory Christmas feel to it. Um, and we are going to be using some other te paint techniques and I'm going to use their uh, synthetic brushes which are great for coating. And Sean will kind of poke in and show you mm -hmm. some of this other stuff. Um, but literally this is, it really is as easy as it sounds. It's You heat it, it bends, you can form it to anything. And you can paint it, no problem. You can put it on terracotta pots, mm -hmm. you can... I mean, you can wrap it around. I, it, it's amazing. Wait till you see it when we use it on here. You guys will just love it. So while I paint, I'm just using fluff as a base coat. Sean will show you some other pieces. So this is a grapevine, even with the trellis behind it. Oop. Little piece. And if a piece kind of breaks off, this stuff is... You're going to see that because I broke a piece last night is that it's, it literally goes right back together. You glue it and then you, boom, you're done. You wouldn't even know and you're gonna paint it. No one would ever know it was broken. And it, you can add little pieces to dress up a thing or you can go big like we're doing on this project. Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty amazing. So um, what I really love about this is you can go down to a Habitat for Humanity, buy a dollar door, um, cover door, and make it into something that is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. I went across the equator as well when I was in the Navy back in a long time ago. I became a what's called a shellback. First you're a polywog and then you become a shellback once you go across the equator. 
All right. Can you give me another paper or another maybe paper? move this because I'm going to hit this part. Oh, sure. So the nice thing I like about Dixie Bell paint, number one, is the coverage is amazing. Number two um, is the consistency. So if you want it for a coverage, you it's great for coverage uh, using their synthetic brushes. But if you want to water it down, it's great for highlighting and doing stuff afterwards. Now, I already know. Oh, sorry. I just rip it. But, um, I already know what you're going to say, Ken. I've been trying to get... I don't need that big of a piece, Sean. You just need a small piece? Yep. No need to overcomplicate it. I know what you guys are going to say. I've been trying to get those synthetic brushes forever, and I can't. So... Let me tell you, just a second, sorry. Are we done? Yep. Okay. Um, so, I talked with Dixie Bell, I had a call with them, and I was like, dude, what's the deal with these brushes? Like, they come in stock, they go out of stock, and they had said, our hand brushes are literally made by a little old man mm -hmm. <laughs> in such and such city. They are all made by hand, and just like COVID, he said, unfortunately, he's had to... Um, lay people off and so the production so when they do get a batch they're not getting thousands they're literally getting maybe 50 to 100 so literally sign up for alerts mm -hmm. as soon as they get it in go check out um they are worth the wait just right there i'm just right here yep that's all i needed it for that's why i said it didn't have to be a big piece um so that was one thing that i appreciated was that it, they were made in the u.s they're handmade um and they're supporting this local business, um, and they're high quality. Like I, these are, I wasn't, I wasn't convinced at first. I'll be honest. I was like, oh, I'm not sure I like these brushes. And now I'm obsessed. I, I wouldn't use anything else. Um, but that's the reason why they they go out of stock so soon is they literally are handmade in the U.S. Like they are thread by thread. And I was like, oh, that makes way more sense. This would be like a corner piece here. You could either go like this. Or like this. I went shopping and bought two giant Hershey bars for a certain candy recipe. So did we. We bought. We bought. We spent like two hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred dollars no. to do our starting tomorrow. We start our bake items on Sean's cooking channel. Hey Sharon, how are you? Uh, Sharon, we're doing a, a frame with would you bend accents to make it really pretty. <clears throat> okay, so I am not trying to get a perfect coverage by any means. I want a distressed, kind of old feeling to this. So this is about as good as I want it to look at first. Um, now, the brushes. You can either clean these right away, or you can suspend them in water. Yes, you can. And the nice thing is that the brushes, the the wraparound is stainless steel, so it won't uh, rot. The, the glue that they're using does not come apart. It does not deteriorate. And they use a, a pretty decent type of wood. You want that in there? So I'm going to dry that. Yeah, I'm going to dry this real quick. We're going to mute. Okay, so obviously it's not dry yet, but we have some time here, and I'm going to explain why to you in just a sec. You can see it's not a perfect coverage. We want kind of a distress of the black, but I'm going to show you the layout so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So this is going to be the top portion of my frame, and it's going to go in the center here, but see how this is too, this piece is too large? We're, we want to cut that, and you can do that with wood you bend. You can actually heat this up and cut it, and we're going to show you how. And then this piece, is gonna end up going along the bottom of the board. And this is one of those pieces I said was broken, but just like that, we're gonna be able to fix that. We then also have corner pieces that are gonna go in each corner, up here and down here. And then I've already shown you this, but this will be the trim that goes on each side. And it's obviously longer for a reason, we'll show you here in a while. Now, as the frame dries, we're actually gonna be painting all of this white first, 
Then we're gonna highlight it with black, and then we're gonna use one of uh, Dixie Belle's new products called Mousse on it um, to bring in some of that crispest red. So I'm gonna move the board to just let it kind of air dry while we start painting these pieces and cutting this. So um, that way you can see how this woody bin works. So let me move this out of the way. We're gonna leave these pieces down here. Diamond Crystal, I want to paint something, but I do not want any brush strokes to show. Any tips on what I should uh, use to paint? Synthetic brushes. Um, you can still get a brush stroke. I mean, the... it's it true, but a synthetic brush will not leave a brush stroke if you do it correctly. Mm -hmm. You can also use sponge. Yep. You or foam. foam. Yep. Foam roller. Yep. And if you have a thin enough paint, you can spray it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my glass mat here and show you guys how cool this is so we can go and zoom in a little bit mm -hmm. so this i want to kind of cut along here but it's a solid piece of wood so how do you do that that's what's cool about wood you've been i'm gonna grab my heating tool and then i have where is my cricket true control blade here we go so we're gonna i'm gonna put this on the heat setting So I just want to show you, it does take a bit, a little bit longer, but you can already see where it's flexing just by heating it a little bit. So this will take longer. I personally like the hairdryer. If you were to use the heat tool, the yellow heat tool like this, it is quicker. I'll have Sean plug this in so I can show you how much quicker. I don't know if we have enough room. We'll see. So this has two heat settings on it. I'm going to go to high and you'll see it is a lot quicker, but you can burn yourself. So even right there, see how easy this is now flexing? And that's what we want, is you want to get it into a flex state, and then we're going to use our tool to cut it. So I'm going to move the hair dryer out of the way. Now, it is extremely important. This stuff will burn if you get close enough, and I'll show you. It will burn. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to paint it, and you oh, see, look at that. That's how easy this stuff bends when, once it's hot. So you can see how cool this is. So I'm gonna heat this section first. Would a hot knife work to cut it? I've never used a hot knife. You know, I don't think it would. And here's why. Um, it needs to almost absorb the heat. Um, so it's it's not an instant heat. Like it's it's you're heating it up almost as if it was like a batch of cookies. So and you want to make sure it's heated before you cut it, because if not, you could just end up breaking it, which you don't want to do. So that's how easy. Hi, Omar. How's it Hi, going? Hi, Omar. I even you haven't been to a live forever. Wow. Everyone that says, oh my gosh, your avatars are so cute. It's Mr. Omar. That's him. Look at his, his avatar. He is so adorable. So I'm going to heat this side over here. Once again, it doesn't take a lot, but um, you want to make sure when you are doing this, you're doing it when it's hot, because if not, you're just going to end up breaking it. And what's nice is you can actually heat this stuff after it's been painted. So it's not that you are, um, you, you have that option. So I'm just going right along and you can see how easy this is bending. And once it dries again, it will be a nice solid piece of wood. So we're just going to easily, and if you need to keep cutting, you can do it. And you'll start feeling it. It starts getting rigid right away again. Um, 
and you can start trimming. Like I forgot to trim this piece right here, but it's already solid wood again. So we're just going to heat it. Hi, Miss Allie. And once it's heated, I can go in and trim away the part I don't want. And it literally comes off just like that. You can clean it up while it's warm. And then... And then once it's nice and firm and if you want a smooth edge, you can sand it. Yep. No so that's what's nice is it's not something like it's a one-time heat activated and you only get so long. If it starts getting to a solid piece of wood again, you just heat it up again. Okay, so we got it right where I basically want it. That's gonna be the top piece. And we're still gonna be able to use these pieces off to the side, but I need them to be the same length because I did cut this one. So just like I did, I'm gonna take my heat tool. Sharon says, you need to try IOD molds. Ooh, what are IOD I molds? I have never heard of that. Okay, so just like that, and look, at it's, it's literally like playing with Play-Doh when it's this soft. And, I mean, this is a piece of wood, and look what I can do. I mean, it's completely malleable while it's hot. And then it once it, once it dries again, or sets, mm -hmm. it's a piece of wood. It's, yeah. it's so cool. All right, so we have this as our top piece. We have this as my one side flourish, and this is another side. Um... And we'll have to cut these at some point. Uh, but first, we're going to paint them and cut them later. So we can put that away for now, Shawnee. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys have questions, uh, let us know. Here's the deal. And I, I've been telling a lot of people this. This, to me, this Wood You Bend product reminds me a lot of Chocotour and the fact that when people see it, they're like, I kind of get it. But until I got product to play with, I was like, it's cool, but I, eh. And then once I got product, not only was I excited, but Jasmine and Sean were like, oh my God, this is yeah, so cool. It is very cool. So when stuff. Jasmine and Sean, who are not very creative slash artsy people, get excited about something, I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, we've hit it. We've hit this the mother load. So, um, it's very cool. The person that created it, her name is Solly. I love her. She's awesome. Um, you guys know I'm all about relationships, so... Anyways, so here's all the pieces we're going to paint. And what we're going to do is we are going to start by painting them black. Then we're going to add a little bit of white and then a little bit more black. And we're going to do some distressing. So to whoever had the comment earlier, I use the synthetic brushes from Dixie Bell to do my base coat. And then I use either their French tip or their bell brush to do the highlighting. So I'm gonna grab Midnight Sky, which I don't have a ton left, and... Got a big one coming though. I do, I ordered some. It is recommended if you use their synthetic brushes to use them a little on the wet side. Why is that? Uh, one, it helps absorb the paint in and spread that paint nice and evenly. So, there you go. So what I do is, Sorry, that's my fault. Um, I've learned not to, Sean has told me, do not dip the brushes in water. And Jasmine has told me that. And the reason why is if you get them too wet. Oh, that's you. Did I just text you? No, it's coming from my sister. Oh, just do this and you mute it. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> okay. So we're going to grab some Midnight Sky. And just a little bit of water is going to get in there. And we really want this to be covered in black because we're going to be putting white over this. And then we're going to be doing gold over that. And we really want to highlight it. So. And you can really kind of see that. I mean, it's gorgeous trim. I love the trim. Now, this one has not been, even though I unraveled it and cut it off from... Uh, heating it. I have not gotten it to where it lays flat yet. So you can see it is by no means Not straight perfect at all, but that doesn't matter because even after we paint it the heat that you applied you can still work with it mm -hmm. Which is awesome Should we ask Miss Allie how her new installation went? What you have in oh yeah, go for it. So Miss Allie has the new hot water tank or hot water system. 
She, it's not like she was out shopping for one. No she one, was required, basically. Yeah, hers was so old it finally died and broke. And... Sean, you're so old. We don't say things are so old. This is a great, this is great for upcycling a dresser or bookcase. Absolutely is why they have this. Absolutely. I am getting into that. So obviously, um, for those of you who have followed me a long time, you know that my background is more in cutting machines and vinyl and paper. And ever since I've been with Chalk Couture, I've been in love with the home decor rep area. And I am finding, yes, I can go to TJ Maxx, Ross, Home Goods. Marshalls, all those places, and buy something, and it's pretty. But when you can make something, oh, it has so much more meaning to it. And this would you bend, what I love about it is it takes a boring drab board or picture frame or a dollar store picture frame, and you can turn it into something just stunning. Mm -hmm. And um, I. I'm a huge fan of Dixie Bell paint, but uh, there is no but. I was going to say is uh, getting comfortable with distressing and all that stuff has been a learning curve for me. And it's really helped to uh, have the right tools and to know the differences between, I hate to say it, but glazes and paint. And we've kind of learned that, haven't we, Sean? We have. Allie says, I took the most glorious hot shower while, while the dishwasher was running. What? We can't even, can we do that? Um, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Okay. Kind of. So this is the piece that broke. You can see right here is where it's going to come back together. So we are going to paint this. Now you could, if you want to, super glue it now, but um, we're going to be putting wood glue on it anyways to attach it to the board. So there's no sense in doing that now. Um, but you could if you wanted to. But what's cool about this is it's, I know this is going to sound weird, but you can stretch this stuff. Mm -hmm. So even when I've cut a piece too short and I'm like, ooh, it's not going to make it, I was able to heat it and stretch it. And we're not trying to get it perfect by any means because we're definitely going to be going over this with other colors other colors so we're just getting this nice black layer so it's not have the brown layer as much um, don't forget about your sides the nice thing about this paint too chalk paint in general um, number one is it dries pretty flat but number two uh, it dries quickly which is what really nice I like okay so we're gonna put that up there but could you imagine this like Show them this piece there, even though it's wet. Imagine that glossy, like that. That would be gorgeous on something. Mm -hmm. that like that be. nice high gloss. It brings out the detail of all these intricacies. Like, that would be so pretty. All right. So once I am done, I'm going to go wash my hands, and Sean will dry this, and then I'll get another piece of butcher paper ready, and we'll start distressing it with white. And then we can start attaching it to the frame and we're going to add a little bit more distressing and then we're going to attach it. You can use super glue. You can technically use hot glue, but um, we have some wood glue that we're going to be utilizing. This is why we started our live a little bit early is this has a lot of pieces to it. And then once we, <laughs> the drop door parts, the easy part. And really, this isn't hard. That's what I love about this Woody Bend stuff is it's not hard. It's not something that um, the only part I would recommend, obviously, for kids is in order to make it malleable, so, you do need to heat one, it. That is yep. one of yours. Oh, I thought it was you one do of need all. Left it behind, but it is not. Nope. It is one of mine. So, um, this will be a fun board. I'm super mm -hmm. excited. I am using retired transfers once we get to the chalk tour part. Um, and I, um, I would have to have Sean look up my messenger. Will you actually grab my phone, open up Facebook messenger and look up Solly. And she explains to me exactly how she describes this. Would you bend material? Cause it's hard to describe like, cause people are like, it's wood and it bends. What is it made out of? And she explains it to me. So if you go into messenger, 
You're in messages. So go into messenger, close that out. So go to that one with the yellow inside of it. Yep. And look up at the top S O L L Y. Apology more. Yep. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And then go up ahead. And I said, keep going right there. There you go. It's what, what does she say? It's a wood composite having all the properties of wood. You can paint it, sand it, wax it, stain it because it is porous, drill it. And of course, when you heat it up, it becomes malleable and will bend to just about any contour. It will adhere uh, to just about any surface, wood, plastic, metals, and even glass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. It's magic. Magic. I'm pretty sure she had to sign a deal with a devil or something, because, like, it's magic. Like, when I saw this, we discovered it because we didn't go to Creativation this year. And so what we do is we just peruse the people there, um, the vendors, and I saw Would You Bend, and I said, Jazzy, go research this. And Jazzy was like, oh my gosh, Kenny, this stuff is so amazing. We need to get our hands on it. But they weren't in the United States at that point. Okay, so I have my black done. I'll let you put that lid on, Sean. I'm going to go clean my hands. If you want to dry and then get a new butcher paper, we can move on to our next level. All right. A little mute. All right, we're going to go to the... There we go. Sorry, it's not our uh, sink has not been cleaned yet. We've been using it all day, so we're we've been busy, busy, busy. All right, I'm gonna mute while I dry.
I never did mute. <laughs> I I clicked it, but it was not clicked hard enough. <laughs> so everyone was probably like, "Wow, that's a lot of love." That's, so good job muting Sean. Yeah, but sorry. here's here's the deal: if I say Sean, you didn't mute, he will say, "I did mute." I did mute Ken. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't. Good thing. Now you guys know that we're boring when we're muted. It's not like we're like, well, F those people and they're so stupid. Da, da, da. Like, literally, he is silent. I'm silent washing, falling asleep. <laughs> we live boring lives. All right. He has to take his, his meds. Cholesterol. All right. So he's going to grab another sheet. So we have our black down and we are now going to highlight it with some white. And then our final touch, which is going to be with gold on the top, will be final. And that's going to be using a new um, uh, product we have. And we also have a piece that I need to glue together. Cutting. Listen. Exactly. Own it, Sean. Own it. I've been trying to tell him that. I don't know. I didn't say it was my fault. I just said it didn't click on like it was supposed to. That's all. I agree, Sharon. I do need a drying box. I agree. That's a good Christmas item maybe you can tell Sean about. And he's going to say, Sharon, what's a drying box? I have an idea what it might be, but... But I do need one. You need two levels or just one? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go back. And these are actually a Choc Couture um, product. They're just two. Uh, you can buy a package of um, tags. And I'm just gluing them together right now with super glue just so that they can start chillaxing. It won't make it permanent, but that's okay because we are going to be adding some more stuff to it. We just want to get it affixed here. I'm going to put it off to the side. You don't know? Yeah, so it was muted while we were back there. Uh, and then we, when you said change it, and I went and changed it, then it, unmu it unmutes itself, which is kind of weird. It should stay muted no matter I'm glad what. we have people in the audience that are investigating and getting to the bottom of this because we need to. All right, so you're going to note right away, number one, we may not have dried it 100%, which is okay. Number two... The paint job might not be 100% perfect, which is okay, because this is not our final destination. Our final destination is going to be um, white, a little more black, and then gold, which I know you guys are like, wow, okay, what are you doing? But let's start with our fluff. So this is fluff, which is a little bit lighter than cotton. Yeah, it's got like a, with my view, I would say it's just an off-white. It's not your bright white. Yeah, and what I'm doing is I'm just going to be going back and forth and just doing a highlight, a dry brush on this. That so, looks good right there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, change so it. So what you need to do, <laughs> thank you for your approval, Sean, uh, is I take the, probably my favorite is the tip brush, especially on something like this, and I take a, a little bit of paint, put it off to the side, and brush it back and forth until it gets to a, I hate to say it, but a dry consistency. I place it on, and... Voila, you have a really nice distressed look on it. Now, if you did miss some areas with black, which we did, do not worry. Do not stress. If you need to punch someone, punch Sean in the face. Um, don't punch Sean in the face. I was kidding. But I just grab, oh, this one. A small, oops, that's an angle. I want an angle. If I look for just like a bullet tip like that and just dab a little bit and anywhere I missed it, I'm just going to grab it and let it dry real quick sec and then we'll highlight it with a little bit more white. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to be highlighting this with a little bit of gold. So um, that's why we don't want it too... Uh, we want it distressed, but we don't want it so distressed that you can't see the black. So we're going to be going over this multiple times with different colors. So we're starting with the, the white.
just like that. Looking at all of our corners, we didn't miss any on this. And the nice thing on dry brush is it dries pretty quick. So you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, we need to dry it. So you can actually move right on to black. And I'm not doing a ton of black, just about that much. And we're just going to hit, I'll bring it up close so you can see here. So that's kind of the consistent we want. Now, if I was not doing gold, if I was not doing gold, I would leave it like this. This is perfect. But if we do gold on white, it's not going to be as much of an impact. So we want it to be mostly uh, black with some white accents. So I think right about, what do you think, Sean, right about there? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so we can move this out of the way. We're going to push this up to let it kind of air dry. And we're going to do this main piece next. Now I can tell you right now that I missed some spots on here. So I'm going to hit that with the black first. And this is going to be our main focal point on the top of the board. So we do want it to make a statement. I think we got all the pieces this time. There we go. And since I have my block out, I'll have you just touch up. It doesn't have to be a lot on the corner pieces, but just so it looks nice. I'm going to dry this and then we'll brush it with the white and black again. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of the fluff and you'll see right here, I'm brushing the majority of it off. So you brush the majority of it off and you can see there's not a ton on there. And with a light hand, you're just brushing it onto the black and highlighting basically those nice crevices, the um, highlighting parts. And the nice thing about chalk paint is if you get too much or it has too much of a highlight, you can add a little bit more. Um, it dries so quick that all right. And then it's pretty dry right from here. So once again, I'm just adding ever small amounts of black. It, we don't even really need to re-put this in the paint. We're just doling down that white. Now, once again, if you were doing just this and not adding a gold accent or stuff, it would be perfect. I wouldn't touch that white, but we want it to be a more muted black because we're going to still be distressing this. So that's what we're going for. Okay, so we're going to grab these pieces, start off with white, dry brush, highlight, doesn't take a lot. And I think one of my favorite things on dry brushing is it really is pretty hard to mess this up. The biggest key is less is going to be more. So it doesn't take a lot. And in fact, after doing a few pieces, you might not even need to put it back into your paint. Like there should be enough on there to highlight it. And it dries pretty quick. So I can just go right back over with this black now and dole that down. But we still get that really nice distressed look. Heidi says this would be beautiful with a metal leafing done to it, gold, copper, etc. And that's the nice thing. You can do that with this stuff. If you have, if you have the, uh, the means of getting it and using it and doing it, it definitely would work nice. And of course, it, with the uh, moose paints that you're going to see, it almost has that effect. Almost. Hey, Barbie. Okay, so we've got that, and I'm just going to go right back over it with the black and kind of dole 
it down just a little. And it's going to be a personal preference um, if you want that nice dark black, but we're kind of going for more of that age distressed look. So to each his own on that part. Um, so these are done. And now I'm just going to grab our two pieces here. Grab our white. Can we hit that? Yes, please. And once again, I'm getting the majority of the white off the brush. And then just hitting it. Now, once again, I know I've said this like 700 times. If I was not doing a gold highlight, I would leave it like this. I love this kind of look. Um, but because we are doing a gold highlight, the gold looks better on black. And Sean can show you, um, I don't know where it is, but they reviewed or they shot the video for the moose. And Jasmine's first thing she said when I came down is she goes, this stuff looks so much better against a black versus a white. And I said, well, it's just a, it's a contrast thing. It's against the black, you're gonna get it to pop more. But it is nice having that little bit of white for that antique look. Okay, you can see I'm not letting this dry. I'm just dabbing it um, over here. I don't know. I'll find it. Um, it might be in the room. Just a sec. I just checked and I didn't see it. Jazzy, where is it? Odd. Where's the crackle board? I know. It's like, where is all that? Oh, they're there. Oh, you silly moose. Put it all back here. You silly goose egg. How dare you blame poor little Jazzy? I didn't say Maria. I just said, where is it? Okay, so depending on how you, much you want, how dark you want your black, you can hit it again, um, just like this. And we're gonna be doing our final gold while it is, I guess we could do it now. What do you think? What's that? Do the gold accents now? Or wait till it's on the board? I, I guess you could do it now so you don't get it on the board. Yeah. So, let me go put these in water. Actually, I'll hold these just in case I need to fix them. So you can see, I'm gonna, why you, why don't you mute? And then you can show that and we can talk about that in a sec. So here's gold over black and gold over white. Silver over black and silver over white. And here is copper. They don't call it copper, they call it like amber. Yeah, here's the, and, show them the bottles. And crimson. You can show them the bottle, Sean. Mm -hmm. While you show them that, I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay. Here's the amber, which looks like copper. Garnet, really pretty red. Diamond, basically silver. and golden gem. Now I went back and forth if I wanted to use the golden or the garnet because it is 
Christmas time, but the garnet doesn't match the color of paste that I'm using, so we're gonna end up using the gold. Now, we're gonna zoom out here for you. This, when I first got this, I said, you guys, this is itty bitty tiny jar. Like, I'm gonna have to buy a bazillion. Let me tell you, Ooh, no. a little goes a long way on this stuff. So, I'm gonna grab, So, for example, on here, you do want, I do this and then hit it. You almost want it where I'll if you were to it. dip it and do it, it's going to be too much. So, what I do is I just take it, and this is the Tim Holtz, I think this is just his Distress ones. By no means are these high quality brushes, but essentially, if you have it gooped on there, it's not going to highlight it, it's going to cover it. So, for example, we want to take this piece, which is the corner piece, and just hit it gently. Can you zoom in, Sean, so they can Thank see you. this? Absolutely, ready. Thank you. So, you want to make sure you do not have too much because it will cover the whole thing. You don't want that. You want it to just hit those highlighted pieces. And by no means do you need an expensive brush. You just need a brush that is going to give you, I guess, essentially the look that you oh oh they all color back people I know people forget that we go live it's fine so see how we are just trying to highlight it and if you were to coat it it's gonna cover it yeah, like which is much. what you don't want so I'm just gonna hit these And now you can see why I didn't want as much white because against the black, we get a much more of a striking feature. So I guess it depends on what you're going with, but see how I'm barely putting any more paint on there and we're, we still are getting a great, let Sean focus on that just one sec. So this brush is just, I got it off Amazon. It's Tim Holtz, um, came in a two pack this size. And this size. Oh, actually a three pack. Where's the little guy? It's probably deep under there somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where he is, but. Yeah, uh, a, oh, here it is. It's um, like half the size, right? Yeah. And I think it was $10. I do not use it really for anything besides something like this. Um, just because it's not a great brush for like coverage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it, for detailing this, uh, you kind of need a smaller brush. And what I do like about this brush is his bristles stay together. So, uh, is, this, is this the same stuff he used on uh, the board? No, the board out there, I actually use uh, gold metallic paint. Yeah. And it's nice, but it dries with a duller finish, where this is going to dry more with that uh, a metallic -y. Yeah. And Heidi, this is, this is actually a new product by them, isn't it? This yeah, it just came out this last month or... Let's see. Yeah, that's why some people don't even know about it. Yeah, it's it just new. went onto their website, I think, this month. So I just mm -hmm. recently got it. And seriously, I'm not kidding. When I got it, I looked at Sean, and the way it's described is kind of a, a mousse. And so when I think of mousse, I think of nouveau mousse or other stuff. So when I got this itty bitty jar, I was like, whatever. That's not going to last. But like, look at, so on this black right here, like, Try I'm to, not even kidding. I'm going to show you. went by too fast. So here it is. I'm just going to put... You can barely even see it on there. So that is just a pin hair of that gold. And it dries so reflective. Like, it's, yeah. it's pretty impressive stuff. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing my corners. You can see I'm just pulling it from the Tim Holtz gloss mat, um, which I have to say when it first came out, I wasn't, so I was like, uh, it's a gloss mat, who cares? I can't live without it now, people. I can't. And there's actually a smaller mat. He came out with like a travel mat, I think it's called. Um, so 
for something like this where I'm picking paint up and I don't want it to dry because if we did this on paper it would dry pretty quick I wouldn't have a lot of work time and here if it dries um, I can reactivate it with water and hit my corners and I think the biggest thing on this is don't overthink where the gold goes because the the idea of what we're going for is that this was originally all gold and in time it distressed it that's what we're going for so you don't want it to be this this perfect gold you almost want it to be where it looks a little worn down and not consistent and every angle is not perfect because mm -hmm. that is what an antique gold frame would look like over time mm -hmm. hey janessa yeah this glass mat is awesome especially if you're working with paint easy cleanup easy 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 cleanup All right, so we got our four corner pieces. And so perfect example is from here to here. Two different looks because I didn't hit it as much there where here I did, but that's kind of what you want. You want that. And we're going to actually do some touch ups with it um, once we get it attached to the board. So I'm just picking it back up using this brush. Yeah, there's no need to buff this. Doesn't need a sealer unless it's going outside. You know what I just now realized is I did not give you guys a link directly to this. It's very new on their website. We, in fact, we like Jazzy and Sean just recorded the video today. Yeah, today. Um, so our review video of it should be up tomorrow because we're doing the Dixie Bell contest. This and our review on their Crackle product, which is pretty cool stuff too. Um, but that's why a lot of you guys haven't seen it, is this is the first time I've kind of shown it live. You show the Crackle product, I don't care, go for it. That review should be up tonight, later tonight, or first thing tomorrow for the contest. So one side's white, one side's black. You can kind of see the difference of what you want to see underneath your different colors. From a neutral gray, blues, yellow, green. Very gray. easy to use. And you'll see that here, there is no crackle. It's because the paint was too thick. Thin, thin, thin. Needs to be thin, just enough to cover it. Even the crackle needs to be thin. Yeah. And I will tell you in the video, I told him, put it in thicker an area so I can tell people, if you do it too thick, this is why. Okay. Won't crackle. So, we'll zoom in. I'm going to pick up more of this gold paint. If the paint gets too dry, you could wet it. Or all you have to do, and I'm not kidding, just a little bit. Just take a little bit and do this all over it, and it rehydrates mm -hmm. everything. And this, you guys saw how much I took. This is all from still that little bit. So this stuff goes a long, long way. Ways. And I wouldn't probably use this, obviously, to paint something, because they do have metallic paint for that. Um, but you could, if you wanted to. Uh, but now that I've used it, I realize, oh, it's not, you don't need a ton. That's why it's in such a small jar. Jennifer Ver Vercant says, Dixie Bell contest, what did I miss? You can explain that. You know it better than I do yet. I don't know the, the whole content, but. He has no idea. So, give me one sec. Let me finish this and I'll explain it to you. It hasn't launched. It's gonna launch tomorrow. We're gonna do a video tomorrow launching it. Um, it's part of our live schedule. Uh, so uh, once we debut the video on the Crackle and this stuff, I think we have eight Dixie Bell videos. And Dixie Bell has agreed to give away a $100 shopping spree. And I'm going to match that and do another $100 shopping spree. And entries will be based on you leaving comments on our videos, watching our videos, subscribing to Dixie Bell on YouTube and Instagram. You know, the usual get entered um, because I want, um, here's the deal. I'll be honest with you guys. You guys know me, I'm honest with you. I It took me a while to fall in love with Dixie Belle, not because the products didn't warrant it. The products warranted it, I'm cheap. <laughs> so I told Sean, I go, why would I go to Dixie Belle when their paint is this expensive and I can go using Michael's coupon on full cart? And I'm not knocking full cart because I used it for a long time. But when I finally did buy Dixie Bell and used it, I should say when Sean used it, 
he came to me, I said, what do you think? And he was like, this stuff is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing stuff. Um, so. It goes on nice, it dries so quickly. It's versatile, you can mix different colors to come up with another color. Like, I was cleaning a red and a blue br uh, paintbrush and it made this beautiful purple. I'm going, ooh, look at that purple we could have made. Well, and their website even tells you how yeah, to do it. Yeah, they give you, they give you um, directions. If you add this and this, this is what you'll get. This is just kind of a way to show all of them kind of put together. You guys, I mean, just look at this. This is not, this is not hard. We're not gilding it. We're not heat setting it. It is literally me just picking it up and look at that. I mean, and I really do feel like this is, anyone can do. It, it really is. When Jazzy and Sean were doing the review, she goes, have you used this? And I said, yes. And I cannot understand it more. I told them before the review, and I think until you use it, you don't get it. This product truly is less is more. You do not need a ton to get your statement across. Okay, so we're gonna highlight a few more pieces. So once again, if it gets to here, I don't put water in it. I just take a little dip. There you go. And I rehydrate it doing that. Okay, once it's on here, very gently go back and forth. And I don't necessarily think you have to use these brushes. They just happen to be what I had. You could probably use the Dixie Belle French tip and do the same thing. Um, I just wanted something a little bit more compact to get into some of these crevices. So you could probably use... Really, you could probably use the Bell brush or the... What time will we be live tomorrow? So tomorrow we have two lives, three lives. What is tomorrow? Wednesday. Wednesday? We have three lives. We might have four lives. Um, so Sean will have a cooking one, which I think, I could be wrong, but I think tomorrow is Almond Roca. And there will be a Ken from the car. There will be the launch of the Dixie Belle contest. And there will be, maybe I'll launch the Dixie Bell contest during my Ken from the car. I don't know yet. Mine will be, was it yours will be first or mine's going to be first? Yours will be first. About what All time? the cooking ones. Um, Everything will be Pacific time, by the way. Yeah, we are trying to do those late morning, early afternoon. Now, if you get areas where you feel like it needs to have been darker black, you could easily take black again and get into some of these areas where it was too much white poking through and then take the gold and instantly if you instantly put it on it almost adheres to that black paint what do you think sean does that look good uh, yep okay so this is we have this little piece which is part that kind of broke off and you'll notice as i start getting drier paint I'm going to start doing kind of this pouncing motion. Um, it truly is, you can always add more. It's going to be hard to take this away. So, but I don't know. Do you think it's pretty? I mean, you did a review video on it today. She, did the, she did the painting. I didn't. Um, what was she by saying? By watching, it's like, it is easy. I mean, there are ways. To, when she was doing it, where's the piece? Oh. When she was doing it, she was just kind of taking a small, very itty bitty brush, like, you know, doing fine tip and just following along the lines of the actual raised pieces where here he is doing the full piece back and forth, which we could have done that as well. It's just a different technique. That's all it really is. And she says, it's amazing how easy this goes on and how brilliant the paint, the colors are. That's to me what it is, is so you had heard Sean say, oh, you're not going to use your did you use this on the other one? And um, what he's talking about is our, we have a board out in the living room mm -hmm. that I put gold on and it was gold paint. But what I didn't like about it is if you get too much gold paint, uh, you are finding yourself painting it back over black and t doing kind of a touch up where this is very brilliant. A little goes a long way on this. 
Jasmine, let's see. Heidi's asking, have we used the slick stick yet? That we have it on order. It's coming. It's on order. That That's was something nice. Sean requested this last month. What was that one? I forget. There were so many things we ordered. Because we ordered the slick coat, the boss coat, the big mama's butter. Big mama's butter. All right. So so. We will. We will. Isn't that gorgeous? I know. Allie asked how we done our shopping. Yep, we just did that. Yep. No live, though. They won't let you go live in Walmart. Very sad. Unless you ask, I guess. Somebody says that as long as you tell them that you're not going to film people, you can do it. So you have to agree to not film people, which is hard. Hard because they're everywhere. Blur out their faces um, and not show Walmart in a negative light, which I'm like, how... I mean, Walmart kind of already shows itself. In <laughs> I mean... So I said, and then of course you always get people that like say, don't film me or, and then the other thing I didn't think that Jazzy brought up, she goes, how are you going to talk? And I was like, I'm just going to talk. And she goes, with your mask, it's muffled. And I was like, ooh, good point. We do have wireless microphones. I am not taking, oh my God. You, you can hide it. I am not taking a wireless microphone. It, people will think we would have you can, security you can, following you can hide us. It. Sean, oh my God. We are not taking wireless mics into oh, Walmart. Right. So Slick Stick helps the paint stick to a ton more surface. Yes. Thank you, Heidi. I knew it was something. I couldn't remember okay. what it was. So I'm going to... There you go. You can see we did not use a ton. Nope. I'm going to put this lid back on. I am close. And we're going to push this. I'm going to go take this and dry it. And then we are going to attach. Yeah. Heat it up. Attach it. Yeah, I can't wait to use it, uh, Heidi. Trying to see what it's what it's like to stick on things that you normally wouldn't Why stick it onto. Do this queen? Yes. Just use a scrubby, a little uh, water, and some elbow grease. Not even elbow grease. It basically will just come right off, nice and easy. I'm coming. Come on, you little Uh oh, somebody wants to go outside. There you go. I have nothing to throw you. Nope. Yeah, it's supposed to be like plastics, uh, metals, and, and mirror, and glass, and all that kind of stuff. I okay. love paint it. So, um, do you want to cover up the paint? Yes. I'm going to move all of this stuff. We're going to bring our board back in. Oh, I do want to paint this. I almost forgot. So I'm going to paint these two. Let me go grab a piece of paper real quick. So these I want to paint a red, which is I'm going to use their barn red. I'm going to shake it real good. And then I am going to put a little bit of this on there. So we're first going to, I just super glued these together. Um, so just going to grab, can you put the lid on that for me? Oh, I just want to. Thank you. Somebody say, Lisa Hotchkiss. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Um, she said, I use slick stick on glass and it will not scratch off so you can paint over it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Off topic, Lynn, or Kaylin, she says, where's my cooking show? My trick, chick, uh, my... My show is on both on YouTube and Facebook, like we do here, uh, and it's called uh, Cooking with Sean. All right. I keep forgetting because it's like one thing, but it's actually he, another thing. You guys, he has he doesn't know what's happening most I of the time. I love him dearly, but literally, he's like, "When are we doing something with my channel?" I was like, "It's your channel. When are you going to start doing stuff?" And he's like, um, "He doesn't know what's going on." Well, when we have so many things here. Just gotta make sure we can fit it in somewhere along the way. Oh, where there's a will, there's a way, Shawnee. All right, so we're gonna dry this real quick. Okay.
Okay, so I don't really want this to be 100% um, covered. You can see in areas it's a little, there's white kind of darker colors coming through. And the reason why is we're going to grab a little bit of that jewel color. Jewel. Okay, so I'm going to dry this. Now you can put this stuff on with your fingers. You can um, use a paintbrush. It's pretty easy. You definitely want to shake it. And this time, I am gonna take the littler one and brush off the excess. See, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. And we're just gonna hit highlights. And what it's gonna do is just a little bit, and I'm not, all I'm doing is grabbing from over here, it's gonna make this sparkle. We don't want to forget about our edges. So I'm just gonna, what's cool about this stuff is you can easily add paint still over it. So it's not even something that you have to finish with. It's, you can layer still on it. Which is nice, because some metallic paint, once you put it down, it's really hard to work with it over it. It's kind of the end all. Okay, so we're gonna cover this one, and there is the silver one too, if you wanna play with, but we're actually going to take, where did it go? Here it went. This, and just hit it a few more times. I don't know if you can see that on camera, just how it's, it's gorgeous. In it's per, I mean, it's pretty stuff. And I am not doing a lot besides taking this mini brush and literally going back and forth and highlighting this. All right, so let me bring this up so you can see it. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. So I'm gonna put this off to the side, let it chillax with the rest of the stuff. And you can go up to us real quick. I'm gonna clean these and then let's start. Bring, I'm gonna bring the board over. You so if you wanna just kinda, while I get the brushes, answer any questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lisa, we wanna start getting pretty sure and start doing things for you guys. Um, of course, some of you guys are probably uh, big professionals and a lot better at it since we've really never done it yet, but we want to try it and do it while we uh, are doing all these things because this is what really the stuff is really meant to do is do it on furniture and stuff so it can be fun. That stuff is so cool. Christina, yes we will. That's part two after this is over. Okay, will you clean up right down here for me? Yep. Forgot these brushes. I'm just gonna put them in water though. We'll get it later. All right.
Got my drink. Got your drink on? I didn't get my drink in time, so. Do you want to go make one or are you good? I'm good. I need to use the little boys' room. Oh. So you can good. answer questions real quick. Are you going on? Yes, we are going to be on uh, CC to, uh, right after this. Our dog's name come in pretty wet. Okay. Sweet. One moment, guys. I'm going to go pick up some dogs and get them. So my cousin got me a, for Christmas, got me a half gallon of Crown Royal Apple and Miss Allie gave me the recipe for a Washington Apple Teeny. Oh, so good. So good. Love it, love it, love it. Sean, Hi, Angela. Yes. I have a confession. What's that? I'm kind of ashamed. You guys, I'm kind of ashamed. I'm not going to lie. Mm. I don't even know if I should say this here. I might get judged. I might get judged. I, for the last week, may have been eating Taco Bell every night. They have an amazing app. And they have this new thing called a crunchy, what is it called? Chalupa. Mm -hmm. Life-changing. Nice. Ooh. Sean decides to make me feel fat and say, I'm going on a vegan diet. Yeah, so and I'm just... like, I'll take three tacos with double meat, please. Yeah, so All I've right. been doing vegan and it's been, it's been good. All right, so let's go down to camera. If you guys remember back when we first started this live seven days ago, um, we don't be eating all my Chex Mix. I'm not. Um, we painted this. This is done in fluff. You can see that it dried and we have a little bit of the um, black still peeking through. So I'm going to remove our delicate purple tape and make sure. Okay, so if you accidentally got paint where you do not want the paint, what's nice about this stuff is their paint is, once you kind of rehydrate it, it's very easy to come off. So we're just going to, there we go. So I just use a baby wipe if I need to, remove it. And then use a window cloth to dry. And now we get to start applying all of our would you bend. So. Would you I'm going to be using wood glue. You could also use um, super glue, hot glue, but uh, I use wood glue. Heat it and it affixes. Man, I was a messy painter, peeps. Messy, messy, messy. All right. So first of all, make sure you were right way. I am. Good. We're off to a good start. So, let's start first with our piece that's going to go um, along the bottom. So that's going to be right here, and it is going to come off a little bit. So, we are first going to make sure we are centered. So, I don't even know how big this board is, because it is not a board I usually work with. We are 30. Oh, that makes it easy. That makes it easy, Sean. Heidi says, I had to go to the other day to Taco Bell and I didn't know they stopped selling the salad. I didn't even know they had okay, the salad. Okay, listen. So she got the Supreme Crunch Wrap, which is what you get too. Oh my God, it's so good. Okay, listen. I boycotted them. You want to know why? You want to know why? They dared. First of all, when I was in high school, they got rid of it. They used to have little tater tots. Oh, Mexi nuggets. Oh. They were literally called Mexi nuggets. So much. Ali and I love them so much. We still use the word Mexi Nugget today. Well, not really, because now we've been told that that could be seen as racist. So we don't use it anymore. But they were called Mexi Nuggets and they were 
Like, now you can get them in the store. They're called Krispy Crowns. They were amazing. But they discontinued them. We broke up for a while. Then I fell in love with them again. And then they had the audacity to get rid of the Double Decker Taco. What? That is a... That, it's a staple. That is like McDonald's getting rid of a Whopper. Wait, no. What do they have? The Big Mac. <laughs> the Big Mac. Okay. Okay. But now, as long as they don't get rid of my Crunchwrap Supreme, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. You, I digress. You bet. You can go back down here. Um, Robin, she said her video froze. Uh, this is the... I forget what size this is. 12 by 24? I have no um, idea. This is from Arteza. You sell salted caramel whiskey. Mm. Sean. They got rid of the Mexican pizza. That's when they when everybody was trying to do Mexican stuff and they tried it too. Okay, so oh I should tell you what I'm doing. So Sean can zoom in. So this I have the wood glue on, but it's still lifting up. Can you zoom in, Sean? Please. Oh, sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The cheesy gordita crunch, I'm telling you. And they have a freaking nacho Dorito taco loco. I can get three items for $10 and their app, you literally get it. And Sean just rolls up like he's royalty, like he's king. And he's like, I'm here for Ken Hess's order. And they're like, okay, thanks, pull ahead. And I'm like, yeah. Anyways, what I'm saying is we can heat this now and make it flat with the boards. So let's do that. So once you have it heated, you can still, you can actually mold it, play with it. But essentially what we want to do is make sure it's flat. So it's still lifting up right here. So I'm going to add a little bit more heat there. And then you continue to press down. And you can do this if you are using hot glue. It's pretty quick. Um, in my case, I'm using wood glue, but it doesn't take long. And it will lay flat. Now this piece, as you guys know from earlier, broke. And some people might say, well, I got my piece broke. This is not good. But really, you can't even tell once you do the distressing. So what I'm going to do is just add just a little bit of wood glue to where it was broken. And the reason I like wood glue is it gives you a little bit more time to work with it. And you're heating it anyways to make it lay flat. Uh, still dries clear, but it gives you more time to work with the wood you bend material. So this one actually laid flat perfect. So we just want to make sure that this is lined up. Might have to push that up a little bit. What? Oh, maybe not. oh no, I already did. What? Nice, no, you already did. Okay. So now, it. it is important to know, if you are using wood glue, it is not instant. It is not going to dry like a super glue or something, so you do need to give it time. With that said, it is nice because it gives you more time to work with it. So, like, I can tell it's crooked. Or I'm crooked. That's cool. Can't See? Do Can't do that. See? It, it was crooked, though. I could tell... There. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry. We're letting it chillax. And I'm just gonna bring and turn my board around so we can work on the top piece. Okay. Ooh la la. Okay, so we have this cutie patootie that's gonna go here. And then it's still gonna, it's gonna pull up a little bit, you can see. So we're gonna need to bend this a little. And we have these pieces that we cut off. You missed that. We actually cut these off. They actually used to be, they used to call this their home. And we are going to use them. I think we're going to go like this and this. And then our corner pieces will be, ooh, maybe not. Maybe I should start with the corner pieces. I think I need to start with our corner pieces, Shawnee. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Sean's spoken people. So what I will do, why don't you zoom out okay. and I'll turn it back around. We'll put this up in just a second. Let's start with the corner. Okay. 
All right, so on these ones, I will use super glue because they are flat. I don't need to bend them, so I'm not really adding any heat. Why are you laughing at me? No, I was noticing what Riley brought in the room. I know, she's obsessed with the diapy. She loves the diapy. And it breaks my heart that I don't get to see my Hades. Oh, I actually do need to heat that a little bit. So, if it lifts up any, just literally... If we don't put that on, we'll lose it. You know us. This product is so freaking cool. So it's hard to see, but like down here, it's lifting up a little bit. Just yeah. add a little heat. Let's see if I can do this. See if Sean can. You're on the, oh, you're going on that camera, I see. And then I can push it down, just like that. And you have that one right up, the one right above it. Looks like it needs to be pushed down. Okay, so we'll heat it. Just like that. It's it's a pretty cool product, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so let's move on to the this corner. Um, now, a lot of their corner pieces come in a set. So you can buy them in sets. They have a part of their website that literally says pairs, and that is where I got these. If you do not buy them in pairs, this is very important, because I did not obviously pay attention when I did my order. If you do not buy them in pairs, everything that you see that could be a corner, you will see L or R. And at the time I thought it was an item code. L and R means left and right. <laughs> we all laugh, but come on, let's be serious. Do you have that on there? They, when I ordered them, yes. Hmm. But I ordered a, a, these ones basically in sets of two. So that one looks... Pretty good. I don't think it's lifting, is it? Good. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. You guys, I'm already in love and I haven't even done the masterpiece. Okay. We're gonna do this top corner. And then when we actually get to the trim, which is this side and this side, we have to do a lot of heating because we have to trim it down. So this one we might need to heat. Mm -hmm. Just yep. That's it. You're just heating one spot. You have to heat down here. here. Thanks. Yeah. So it doesn't take, on smaller pieces, it does not take a lot of heat. When you're looking at trim, the really thick trim, the um, stuff that we're using, it does take a bit of time to heat it up. So just keep that in mind. And that's where the hotter heat tool will come into play. And I tend to use the super glue on things that I know are laying flat or I'm not going to have to finicky you with. Um, the trim, I will not use super glue because I want to be able to bend it as I put it down. So the corners are in now. Um, now we can play kind of where we want the center piece. So I am gonna measure, cause we know 15 inches is 
center. Can you put a dot at 15, kind of in the center, because it'll get... You want to center here? Or yep, just... does better anywhere in that area. Okay, so this part is going to be butt right up, and so this part will be a little higher, and you can see in the camera that this one is going to need to be heated. This is a bigger piece, so if I was to bend it right now, it is going to break. So you really want to place it where you're going to put it before you put the glue on and heat it. And then kind of push it down where it's going to go. So you can see even just a little bit of that heat. I know it's hard to see, but um, it's just flexible and it's only gonna be flexible where you apply heat. So that's where when, when someone says they put it in their oven at 200. 200, the whole thing comes out, it's nice and heated. It's really flexible. Malleable. Malleable. Okay, so I have it where I like it. So I'm gonna add some super glue. I wonder if you could use if you could put these in a crock pot to keep them warm until you use them. Maybe crock pots are so 1990s. Now it's Insta pots. So I, I want to make sure you guys know I'm not heating this to dry the glue. I'm heating it to make sure that if it is raising up the heating is what will allow it to be flexible so you can push and hold and it literally molds to the frame. And this one actually we are pretty lucky that we didn't have to do too much. So we have right here and here and we have those pieces that we cut from this. So remember if you were here in the beginning we cut these from here and on the other side and what we're going to do is, oh, I think I like it the other way. What do you think? Like that? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like so that. once again, I'm going to, before I put glue on it, can you come in at an angle so they can see it this way? I can. Just a sec, guys. I just want you to see this angle so you can see what happens. Thanks, Shawnee. Okay. So we'll go to that camera view. So when I push down here, see how it lifts up? We're gonna heat. And then literally, all I have to do, just hold it for a few seconds as it cools. cools down. If you let it go, just like that. That's how easy this stuff is to use. And then I can now put my glue on it because I know it will lay flat. Mm -hmm. So I'm just adding a little bit of this super glue. You could do wood glue. I'm just rushing the process. And if it still lifts on me, I just add a little bit more heat. So once I like, that looks good, right? Or is it not straight? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So I find it's easier to um, heat it first and then glue it. Other people will glue it and then play with the heat. Um, so I guess it's each to each his own. Um, this one has a little bit of a different cut to it. 
but no big deal. We're going for an antique -y look. So once again, I'm just gonna press down on this side and it's lifting just a little bit here. And all we have to do, I have seen people um, uh, the using a griddle. And I told Sean, I was like, we need something like that because we don't have anything like that besides our outside grill. And I was like, when you start to play with this stuff, um, the heating is, uh, it varies on how big the piece is. So if you are using a thicker piece, it's going to take obviously longer to heat. Um, but the griddle is an idea. So, okay. So this one lays pretty flat, but if you are afraid, you just... Now, when I am unraveling, like, um, the trim, I do use the heat tool because it's a lot stronger. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around because we use wood glue on this. I want to make sure it's a fix down because it's still... Oh, we're good. Yay! Oh, no, we're not. Yeah. It's close. Or not. It's not. <laughs> I have no patience, people. None. Zero. Zilp. So, Sean, tell me, how, how, much, how much pain were you in after installing a floor at Ollie's? How what? How much pain were you in after installing that floor at Ollie's? The day after, or, or the night, that night, uh, the first day of installing Ali's floor, I was so sore. Um, I have been sore like that in a long time. My mid-back was horrible. My knees... Uh, even though I was using knee pads, but because of the knee pads getting up and down, up and down, the straps that were holding those on, like, not raw, but very sore in the back behind my So knees. I didn't get a, the first weekend we got to, I got to be over there and just hang with them and I got to remove the floor and I had a ball, but we had Peeny uh, with us, um, who is Re or Remy now, and Allie could care less if we brought her, but... As we were getting to go to Allie's house, um, I looked at Sean and I was like, are you worried about having the dogs there? And he was like, I don't want to upset you, but yeah, because it snows yeah. and that's it four snow, big yeah. dogs and we're putting in a wood floor and these dogs are puppies. So they're crazy and they're running around. And he was like, can you leave them home? And Remy, she's not an everyday visitor of these two dogs, so I didn't want to leave her here alone. So I was here all by myself, and um, when I went to go visit them later in the evening, I said, how are you doing? And Sean was just like, I hurt so bad. I hurt. I hurt. Which I heard the week before, just popping tiles up. Yeah, you were sore, too. Yeah. But the next day, I was a lot of the pain went away. I had a little bit. You guys, wait till we show you pictures. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, yeah. It turned out really nice. All right, so let's play on Trent. So trim, first and foremost, you can see. Is wiggly woggly. And it's too long. And I did that on purpose. So we have to make up our mind what kind of cut we want to do. If we want to do a straight cut, if we want to do an angle, I think we'll do a straight cut. I would say too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this first over here. And we are just going to heat it. Sean can zoom in here. <gasps> Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying, John. You got me. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have a straight cut, which I think we might. Um, and the best way to figure that out, I'll just grab this Cricut one because it was there, um, is obviously to use some sort of 
reference for straight. Yeah, so we're gonna put this here. This is obviously not straight, but our cut is pretty clean. Yeah, probably that would be cleaner. So I'm just gonna have it go off a little bit. What are you gonna use? And then I'm gonna use a... Uh, I can grab my big knife upstairs. That would be cool. a clean cut. Do it. So since he's gonna grab a big knife, big mamma jamma, I don't even know what this is gonna do. Oh my gosh, there are so many different angles. Look at this. Look at Ken in action. Ooh, ah, ooh, that's a good shot. We'll leave it right there for you, my lovely peeps. While well, he's gone, I'll take a little drink from Captain. The fact that it's still kind of a brown color means it's good, right? You love his. I, ooh, look at you, Sherry, your, um, your, uh, your profile picture is the fall off the wagon from Truck Tour. I love that. There's my head. Okay, I'm waiting for Sean. And I'll heat it. And then we're going to cut it. So I'll drink some more. Do you guys want to see my fancy Nancy? So camera one. Camera two. It's very HSN. We're very professional here at Ken's Creations. Okay, whoa! It's a big knife, I told you. Oh my god, I thought you were grabbing a utility knife, but this will work. No, you need one straight down shot. Oh my gosh, Sean! What do you hold this? Oh, that's what I was going to say. There are um, holders that um, people that cut your hair. Clipper holder? What kind no, of like what are the people that cut your hair? Not uh, hair dryers. Barbers. Or barbers or... Hairdressers. Hairdressers. They have stands. If you have a stand to put this in, it's nice because you can have it go and still have both your hands. Yeah. For me. Can you heat up here? How much are you cutting off? Huh? How much are you cutting off? Pretty good amount. So basically what I'm trying to do is cut to where we have a nice straight line. And you're going to know right away if you need to add more heat or not. It will feel like Play-Doh. So. Probably heat the knife too. Let's just do one at a time, yeah. Okay. You might go. It's pretty good. So we're just gonna, just like that. So we have this end, let's do this one. So I'm just bringing it, heating it. Perfect. So we can put these over. And now I need to measure how long I want this. So, here, Rob, can I have a tape measure? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to bring this whole thing out again, but it's right there. Right oh, there. right there. Yeah. You're going in edge to edge or going to leave a little space? So let's do it at 14 and 3 quarters, Shawnee. 14 and 3 quarter. Okay. So. Oh, wow. I cut this really long. 14 and 3 quarters is right about here. Measure twice, cut once. Thank you, Sean, for that wise advice. Okay. Right about there.
Tis my Chinese clear. I mean... You like it? Sean, this is the point of the program that even if you don't like it, you lie and you say it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your entire life. Nobody could have cut it better than that. That's what you say. That's what you did. But sometimes he's like, ooh. And I say, what is ooh? Nothing. It's fine. I'm like, then why'd you say ooh? It's nothing. It's fine. I mean, it's okay. Do you like it? That's what he does, guys. I'm not even kidding you. Okay, so we're going right at this line. Heedy heedy. The best thing I can describe is is it's Play-Doh. It feels like Play-Doh. Okay. All right, let's bring our board up. Get the vicious attack knife out of the way. Okay, so this is where all they see is black. I know, I'm, I have to move one oh, to sorry. Move, move the other. So this is where, um, for me, the wood you bend is really cool because we can manipulate this as we heat it and stuff. So we have this piece, we have this piece, and if we want to, we can grab some stuff down here or leave this blank. It's up to us. We do have some small pieces. We also have some of this, but the thing is, is this is almost too, too much, and I kind of like... I like the spacing myself. Sean. I do. I you like just it. don't want more work. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's great. Okay. Um, and then this piece will eventually, you guys will see it once we actually do it, we'll end up going here, but we'll do that later um, in the chalk tour part. So we now are going to affix this. So I'm going to start on this side first. And just like I did on the other ones, I'm going to heat it first. Manipulate it, because as you can see, it's, it's crooked, it's all that. So we're going to heat it. I'm going to hold up here. So you're able to manipulate this and start bending it. So you want to figure out kind of your first. And for me, what I have found to be the best is I'll start up here. I'll put glue on it and know that that's where I want to start. And then while it's heated, you can lift this. Now, it's very important. Can you use a mint, Johnny, so mm -hmm. they can see it a little better? Yeah. You want to heat as you go and lift. You do not want to force lift this if you have not heated it. It will break. It will snap on you. Okay, so I think we will, I don't think my cut was very good or this is crooked. Is that good or, I do have a little captain in me. It looks straight. Okay, listen. So I start with a little bit of super glue. You can also use hot glue. And I'm gonna start with this where I want it, which is you like right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm gonna start by heating this part first. Now, I will tell you there is a few of the moldings that are very thin. Um, Shrama has some over there. And if you heat them too much, you actually can put a divot in it. So just be mindful of that. Now, before we, you can see, look at this. Not good, not happy, it's trailing. So we're gonna heat this part first and then uh, then we will put glue. Because you can see the, the actual wood you bend is crooked, not the cut. So that's where heat comes in. So I know Sean's trying to help, but I want you to stop real quick. The reason why I want him to stop is not that I don't want his help. I want to show you how you want to manipulate it as it heats. And you're also, we're end up going to happen to bend this up to put more super glue. So. So 
just even that much heat, I have total, I can start moving it even down here. So, but the part we were most concerned is we want to be able to lift this without snapping it. So we need to heat it a little more. Can you lift it? Can you lift it up a little more? And then we can play with making sure it's nice and even, place our hand on it, and we just continue down the road. You can look at comments and questions while I do this. Once your hair dryer starts heating up too, you don't really need to apply that much heat. It's pretty flexible because it's absorbed the heat. All right, so I'm gonna have Sean zoom in on this last part. So this is the part where you really wanna pay attention because not only do we want to center it, but we also need to twist it a little bit. And this is the part too, if you cut it too short, you can heat it and pull on it and it will extend on you. So I'm gonna heat it first. And the first thing I'm gonna do is move this to where it's nice and centered. Um, now there are people that do put a uh, like a sheet, a fusible sheet under this kind of think of like heat and bond so that way when it heats it bonds. But in our case, we're actually just using uh, super glue and Sean's bracelet, he can show you that. And in 2021, we hope to have those on our site. Okay, so now I'm going to bring it and have Sean help me look at it and make sure it is centered. And you can still, oh, they can't see. Can oh, you zoom out? Let me zoom out and move over. You can see it is still kind of workable. Like I can push it around, I can move it. And once it does get to the point where it's not movable, you can absolutely reheat it and do more. But I actually, I like it. I think it's a good look so far. <laughs> So let's do this side. So once again, we're gonna start with, pay attention now, I've learned this the hard way of which way your leaves are going. So our leaves are going up. We wanna make sure our leaves do the same thing. And I am gonna start by heating the top part where I want it. Okay. Yeah, you need to. I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this, but literally during every live, I know when he needs to go to the bathroom because he's like a two year old and starts doing like this little dance. I call it the poo poo dance. He's gonna be so mad at me for telling you that, but you know what? That's real life people. Okay, so I have this part heated and I can push it down. It's lined up. And I'm just going to hold this for a quick second because this is our anchor. Think of it as an anchor. You're anchoring this with hot glue. 
okay? The rest of it, we can manipulate with heat. So we can, you know, we're basically looking to make sure it's centered. The rest of this, when you heat it, you can see even right there, see how much it wiggles without breaking? You're not gonna be able to do that with normal wood, right? So this stuff is, it's awesome. It's, I, I can't tell you how cool this stuff is. It's pretty cool. Right, so now I'm going to heat the rest of this because we need to be able to essentially lift it up at this point to get glue under it and to uh, manipulate it. So let's go and do that. So you, what you're looking for is that lift. And you'll feel the, I can't stress enough, it feels like Play-Doh, so you'll feel the resistance. So if you feel resistance, a little more heat. And keep in mind, this is after we've already painted it. This is, paint has been a fix. So it's not even something that, the it's like once you paint it, you know, you have to work quickly. You can reheat this stuff even after you painted it. Do you feel better? Mm -hmm. Number one or two? Two? Because I smelled number two. Oh, you did not. You were doing your poo-poo dance. I wasn't. I'm just standing here. I wasn't doing that. Sean, I know you like clockwork. <laughs> so once again, we want to heat it to where we get it, where it's malleable. And you can put the glue on directly on it, or you can kind of see where it's going to be on the wood, push it down, and then heat it. Now, even if you are, you're pushing it down, if something pops in the middle here, just add heat. Now, I would not use an industrial heat tool at this point, because even though we painted it and stuff, it could still burn. And ruin the paint job. Yep. So I want to get enough on to get to the final part, but we want to leave this end because you want to be able to manipulate it to go back and forth. So. Beth asks, where did you find this product? Um, let me finish this and I'll tell you. Can you hold that? Okay, go and hit that. Stop. Now remember, this in part's an anchor, so we're going to want to put a little extra glue. And you can manipulate this while it's still hot. So I'm going to have Sean heat it. Or I can. And this is where you get the flexibility to kind of move it if you need to. But I think it looks really good. Mm -hmm. All right. So the question I still have is, do we want to fill this? I feel like we need to. I say no. I like it as is because I want to see. I want to see some of that white. Flag. Here, let's hold it up and ask the audience. Right, hold on. One, one. Okay, so do we want to put something here? I do have really thin trim because the look I'm kind of going for is the old movie style poster, grand ooh la la. Let me bring this up. Do we need trim on the bottom? Oh, no, we don't. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now we don't. Done. Yep. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and do a white shot here. 
Okay. Heidi says, will the paint crack if you use something other than the paint tonight? Yes and no. Depends on the paint, of course. But essentially, um, it won't, cr I guess it would crack, but when you stretch it, the paint property should stretch with it. But I will say, if you stretch it too much, naturally it will crack and you'll mm -hmm. have to fill it in. Um, but the painting hasn't. I have not seen anywhere where I've had to go back and fix anything. Okay, so what do you think? I love it. Isn't it beautiful? And I mean, it, 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 I just love it. Now, this will be something we show uh, in our next segment. It just broke, but that's okay because it's going to go right here. Um, or I might do down here, actually. I don't know yet. Maybe we'll figure small, it out. Small, small or smaller boxes. spaces instead. So we have basically everything ready to go for our second segment. It is 654. Let's show you back up here again what this turned out with the Would You Bend and Dixie Bell. And this was originally an Arteza. Arteza that color. And we just used black paint, trimmed it in the gold, and look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorge. Gorge. So um, give us, we will be live on my other channel, 715. Yeah. Okay, 715. Um, and we will finish everything over there. If you guys do use Dixie Belt couple th or Dixie Belt and or Would You Bend a couple things, Dixie Belt does not have a coupon code. Um, so they are where they are. And the reason they don't have a coupon code is they do not want to compete with their um, suppliers. So Dixie Bell, even though they have a website and you can go to their website, Dixie Bell's major presence is mom pa stores buying their product, having it in their, their store and selling it. And that's mm -hmm. how we first discovered them was in a local store in Spokane. And so by doing a coupon code, it can um, disrupt their suppliers because then their suppliers are like, gosh, now we're competing with Dixie Bell. That's why they don't have it. Uh, number two on Dixie Bell, please, please, please. If you want stuff, sign up for their alerts. They get stuff in weekly. Buy it once you get the alert. On the Would You Bend, um, use our coupon code, CANHAS10. I'll get you 10% off. Use our links down below and start off small. I recommend the trim, get some other pieces, play with it. You'll get a feel for it and how easy it bends and how malleable it is yeah, to work true. with it it's and fun. stuff. But it's very cool product. I love it. And we found it uh, to answer the question. So basically, uh, we usually go to Creativation every year. Creativation is where a lot of the arts and craft industry debuts their product for the year. Last year, Creativation and Chocotour Leadership was back to back. So we had to make a decision, do we go to both and we're gone for two weeks or do we skip Creativation? And we went to the Creativation and every year it's gotten smaller and smaller and we just went over all the merchant people and saw what businesses were there. And I was like, well, we pretty much are in contact with all of them. And the only one was this new company called Would You Bend. And I didn't even pay attention to it. I said, Jazzy, I don't know. What do you think? She went and looked at it. After about 20 minutes, she was like, this is cool. She literally looks at me. She was like, you heat wood and you can bend it. And I was like, that's literally impossible. You can't <laughs> do that. And then I saw it. Um, so we reached out to the company and at that point they weren't even in the U S in fact, they just have entered the U S in the last two months. Since, well, they basically came online on the 1st of November. 1st of November because they had to find a supplier here that's willing to house it and ship it because obviously okay. when it is, um, in its cooled state, it's wood, it will break yeah. it, it. So you have to find someone that's willing to ship it with care yeah. and all that stuff. So they got online November 1st, I became an affiliate, and then I said, I need a coupon code. My peeps need a coupon code. And so they've been so kind, so definitely support them. It is a local business um, in the United States that's shipping the product. Yep. The inventor, Lou or the or founder, Louisville, Louisville yep. Yeah. The founder is out of um, England. Uh, England and stuff, so uh, stuff. So if you want to join us on our next channel or watch the replay, just look up Chalk Couture, Ken's Creations, Chalk Couture, Ken's Creations. Not, well, com. Not this one, right? What? That one? No, that's my website. All right. So if you just look up Chalk Couture, Ken's Creations on YouTube, that's where we'll be, or even on Facebook. Yeah. Um, we'll come live 715 and we'll finish the project over there. 
So thanks for joining us. I know it was a longer live because there was a lot of steps. Um, I have to tell you, it takes a lot for me to get excited about a product. It takes even more to get Sean and Jasmine excited. The Would You Bend it's awesome. and this new mousse from Dixie Bell, both of them were like, okay, we get it. This is awesome. So, um, but we'll see you over on our other channel here in a few minutes. Bye everyone.